Hey there, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's both captivating and crucial to your heart's well-being, pericardial effusion. I'm your guide on this fascinating journey, and together, we're about to uncover the secrets of this hidden heart condition. Let's establish the stage before we begin our investigation of pericardial effusion. Imagine the pericardium as a two-layered protective jacket that hugs the heart. Consider it as the protector of your heart, keeping it safe from harm. In a healthy individual, the pericardial sac contains between 15 and 50 milliliters of serous fluid. Now, what if our protector suddenly started malfunctioning? Imagine an excess collection of fluid filled inside this pericardium and not giving enough room for the heart to beat properly. That's pericardial effusion. This fluid may be transudative, exudative, or sanguineous and may contain infectious organisms or malignant cells. So, what causes pericardial effusion and what we can do to treat it? Let's get started. First of all, let's start with pathophysiology of pericardial effusion. Several causes can lead to pericardial effusion. Infections, inflammation, trauma, or even specific drugs may cause it to occur. These are like the intriguing puzzle pieces that make up our heart's hidden enigma. Because of the pericardium's poor flexibility, cardiac tamponade can occur in acute situations with only 100 to 150 ml of fluid. The buildup of fluid causes the pericardial sac to become more pressurized, which causes the heart, particularly the right heart, which has a thinner wall to be compressed. Venous congestion results from the right heart's impaired diastolic filling. Reduced left ventricular diastolic filling causes a reduction in stroke volume. The initial compensatory reaction caused by adrenergic stimulation to sustain cardiac output is tachycardia and increased contractility. But later, cardiac output and blood pressure gradually decrease. Patients often present in emergency room with complaints of chest pain with dyspnea, with symptoms that improve while sitting upright and worsen while lying flat. Now, why does this happen? Due to inflamed pericardium, nearby structures get contracted and cause this kind of pain. Patients may also present with symptoms that are not specific for pericardial effusion, including dyspnea, edema, and fatigue. While taking history, it's important to take medical history of malignancy, tuberculosis, as well as any chronic health conditions and prior surgical intervention. Now, let's see how we can diagnose this condition. How do medical professionals solve the mystery of pericardial effusion now? To reveal the underlying layers and gauge the volume of the fluid, they use advanced equipment like echocardiograms and MRI scans. It's like solving a challenging puzzle. Chest X-ray. Often, patients with pericardial effusion show a water bottle sign or a water bottle shaped heart on X-ray. There may also be evidence of pulmonary edema, engorgement of the pulmonary vessels, and pleural effusions on chest X-ray. ACG. The ECG findings vary from normal to non-specific ST segment changes for small effusions. For large effusions or tamponades, the ECG may demonstrate electrical alternance. Now, we have talked about electrical alterants before. Here QRS complexes of varying heights. Echocardiography. Echocardiography offers a dynamic evaluation of the pericardial effusion that enables measurement of the effusion size and assessment of the presence of cardiac tamponade physiology. So it's definitely a test of choice when evaluating pericardial effusion. CT or MRI. Pericardial effusion can also be identified on CT or MRI of the chest or heart. However, this is not the diagnostic modality of choice. Now, let's have a look at most important part of this video. Treatment options available for pericardial effusion. Once the diagnosis is made, it's time for action. Treatment options range from medications to remove excess fluid to more intricate procedures like pericardiocentesis. Now, let's explore the treatment options available for pericardial effusion. Drainage procedure. Number one is to remove excess fluid from pericardium. The procedure is known as pericardiocentesis. The pericardiocentesis is performed with a pigtail catheter placed in pericardium of heart to drain the excess pericardial fluid. This fluid is then sent for testing to rule out malignancy or infection like tuberculosis. Next, pericardial window. It's a procedure where the surgeon will make a small incision, 
usually on the left side of your chest. Next, the surgeon carefully opens the pericardium, creating a window or opening in it. This allows the excess fluid to drain into the chest cavity, relieving pressure on your heart. Next, pericardium removal surgery. Pericardium removal surgery is usually considered when pericardial effusion poses a significant threat to the heart's function or when other treatments have been unsuccessful. It's a last resort solution when the heart needs permanent relief. It's a hidden epic within your chest, a heart secret adventure. But with timely detection and proper treatment, you can ensure your heart continues to beat its grand symphony. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the mysterious realm of human heart. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And remember to subscribe for more captivating explorations of medical mysteries. Until next time, keep your hearts open.